بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله الذي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات الوهم وأكرمني بنور الفهم اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا خزائن علومك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين After introducing the idea of معقولات أولى and ثانية primary or first intelligible and secondary ones آيت الله متحري says this is more known from the time of Hakim Sabzabari and he says after him this is uh, mentioned in the books and maybe this is actually something that he introduced he says شاید هم از اختصاصات حکیم سبزواری so maybe uh, he for the first time introduced because he says we have not seen uh, such distinction in Ibn Sina and even Sadr al-Muta'allahin although in Asfar uh, there is a phrase that maybe refers to this but with some difference he says in volume 2 of Asfar page 64 Mullah uh, Sadr talks about Oruz Kharaji wa Oruz Zehni Oruz Kharaji wa Oruz Zehni and he says this is the closest thing that Ayatollah Mutahari knows in the ideas and works of Mullah Sadra but many people after Hakim Sabzabari have mentioned this he has some criticism but then some of this criticism he tries to answer or finds another way of introducing this concept uh, and I personally think that actually if we uh, use this distinction carefully I think it's very helpful we don't want to say it's perfect but I think it's very helpful and as I said many things can be solved uh, with reference to these uh, differences between ma'gul ula, ma'gul thaniye falsafi, ma'gul thaniye mantaqi. So the first objection that Ayatollah Mutahari has is that Hakim Sabzawari puts uh, the focus on mahmul or arid. Arid means something becomes a predicate uh, so it's mahmul that is divided into ula and secondary but he says why we need to limit it to mahmul or arez why we have to say this is about mahmul as such mahmul bimahuwa mahmul we can say, even if, for example, ensan, even if it is not mahmul, is it ma'gul ula or thani? Of course, we say it's ma'gul ula. Why we need to talk about mahmul? But I don't think, uh, to be honest, this is a big issue because uh, we can say, okay, if we put it as mahmul, uh, whether it is uh, oruz for them because he wants to talk about oruz and etasaf and etasaf needs to be as mahmul the second objection is is there any valid and reliable basis or ground for distinguishing between oruz and etasaf and also the zarf oruz wa zarf ittisaf means what is oruz what is itself and where is the place 
the container for Uruz and Ittasaf. Do we necessarily in every proposition have you know, Uruz, Ittasaf, etc. And he talks about this a lot. That what's the difference? And he himself introduces an idea that he says maybe we can say that Oruz is a kind of Vujud uh, Mahmuli. You, you remember in uh, previous books we had this discussion, and inshallah it comes later. Mm-hmm. Sometimes Vujud is Mahmuli, yeah, means it's like manai esmi, it is mustaqil, it can be understood by itself. Sometimes wujud is rabit. In Farsi, the difference between hast and ast. Hast is wujud mahmuli. Ast is wujud rabit. Or, for example, in Arabic, the difference between kanai tamme and kanai naqase. Or, for example, mawjud, for example. And we say Zaydun Mawjudun or Kana Zaydun. Uh, so here we are talking about Wujud Mustaqil Bil Mafhumiya to be for Mawzu. So he says Oruz is when we have Wujud Mustaqil. So for example, we say Insaniya for it's individuals or haywaniya or uh, aras like white being white etc all of these are existing there is something outside that you can say this is ensan or you can say this is uh, white but the things that are like imkan or wujud they don't have wujud mustaqil we don't have something outside that it is wujud uh, what we have outside is insan if faras is baqar maybe about wujud is difficult to understand this because we after asalatul wujud is very difficult for us but uh, you can say about imkan Imkan is not something that is a johar or aras. So that we can say, okay, we point at it. We can point at it. So, oruz, we can say oruz is for those things that have independent, separate reality that they can refer to. But etasaf is just like wrapped, nisba. And it's not separate. Uh, let me read for you this part of it. He says, Masalan, dar misal zaydun mumkin ul wujudast. When we say Zaid is a contingent being, contingent is etabari. There is nothing outside that you can say it's emkan or mumkin. You cannot point at it. But everything which is outside is contingent. But contingence is not something separate, it's etabari. So, manshae intaza is there. For philosophers say manshae intaza is outside. But there is nothing independent that you can refer to as this. And then he says, uh, also maybe instead of saying that in ma'gulat thani falsafi, oruz fil zihn and ittasaf fil kharij, we can say there is no oruz instead of saying oruz fezen. If we keep oruz for something which has independent being outside. So, what he says after this is that sometimes 
uh, some scholars when they say ma'qul thani they don't mention philosophical or logical because this usage was also there that when they say thani they mean mantaqi they you know didn't always mention thani uh, mantaqi or thani falsafi thani for them meant falsafi thani meant mantaqi for them because they were mostly using this in logic so when they said thani they meant thani mantaqi many times but nowadays we always mention it is mantaqi or falsafi he says ma'qul ula as we said so before its instance can be haqiqi outside like insan hayvan shajar or can be inside us but in a real way this is also a good point you know for example if you have pleasure or pain or love or dislike hatred these love hatred etc are not outside us but they are not also zehni they are kharaji but their kharaj is inside us yeah this is not wujud zehni pleasure or pain that we have inside we feel inside is not salam alaikum atullah salam alaikum atullah welcome yeah welcome so pleasure and pain that we have inside are kharaji are real yeah are not just image is not wujud zehni but kharaj is inside so you have to know that sometimes kharaj is inside but as kharaj not as zehni yeah and then he says but this was ula so whether it is like insan and hayvan outside or like pleasure and pain and love and dislike inside both of them are kharaji and maqul ula but if it is something like wujub adam uh, imkan wujud imtina if it is something like this so they don't have any existence in kharaj independently they exist in uh, uh, for example mahiya or in a non mahiya like allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we abstract these concepts therefore this is maqul thani falsafi if it is like adam wujub imkan etc and it can be mantaqi if it is like no and gens etc and then he says something that is what you know also i think is a good you know what like conclusion that he says this paragraph is very important he says ma mi binim ma sawai maqulat avaliye do daste mutamayez ra tashkil midan we see that really we have two types of concepts apart from the first or primary ones so leave aside mahiyat and san etc then we see we cannot put uh, no and gens and fast and kulli with wujud and imkan and wujub we cannot put them in the same category there is no choice other than separating these into two groups and we call it mantaqi and falsafi he says 
we see that what is outside or other than ma'gulat awaliyya, the primary intelligibles, forms two distinct groups. One group is existential conditions of something which is outside. And one is for things which are inside mind, zehni. So we have kharaji and zehni. Kharaji is ma'gul saniye falsafi, zehni is mantaqi. Uh, he says it seems that sometimes in the past our earlier scholars have referred to the logical concepts and philosophical concepts as ma'qul thani so it's not altogether new it seems that before that this was there then he says uh, when a proposition, a qadiyya, is made by ma'gulat thani mantaqi, they become zehni. These propositions are mental. Because ma'gulat thani mantaqi cannot be outside. So any proposition that has ma'gulat thani mantaqi, it becomes mental, zehni. And anything which is Involving philosophical secondary intelligible, it's, he called it qazaya haqiqiyya. Instead of calling another name, he's a qazaya haqiqiyya. But qazaya haqiqiyya includes ma'gulat thaniye falsafiyya. Okay? So anything. Which is secondary but not logical, he calls it Qazaya Haqiqiyya, which includes Ma'gul Thaniye Falsafi, but it's not only that, it can be also something else. And then he says, Haqiqat Inast, Ke Ma'gulat Thaniye Mantiqi, Munahasar Ast, Be Qazaya Zehniye. But the reality is that. Logical secondary intelligence are exclusive to mental propositions and mental propositions are exclusive to logical, so it's vice versa. But in Qazaya Kharaji or Haqiqiyya, it can be primary intelligibles or it can be philosophical secondary intelligibles. Then Haji says, فَمِثْلُ شَيْئِيَّ أَوْ إِمْكَانِي معقول ثان جاء بمعنى ثاني جاء أمزة جاء بالتخفيف. He says things like such as شيئية thingness or إمكان contingents they have come like معقول ثاني they are secondary intelligibles. What does he want to do in this poem in this couplet is that he wants to refer to an objection raised against Khaja Nasiruddin Tusi. Khaja Nasiruddin Tusi, when he talks about Shay'iyya and Imkan, says these are Ma'gulat Thaniyya. And some people who were not familiar with Ma'gulat Thaniyya, and they only thought Ma'gulat Thaniyya has to be Mantaqi, they said Shay'iyya and Imkan is not Sanawiyya, because they thought anything that is Sanawi is Mantaqi which would, should not be applied to something outside. And Haji explains that Ma'gul Thani has two types. One is Mantaqi and one is Philosophy. Kal. So, those who said that Shay'iyat and Imkan are not ma'gul thani. If they meant ma'gul thani, mantiqi, they were right. But if they meant none of ma'gul thani, ma'gulat thani, it's not correct because it is ma'gul thani, falsafi. The next discussion, I just raise it for your preparation. Your mind, inshallah, gets ready. Is about... Dividing existence 
into absolute and non-absolute. So here then, there is a discussion about this, inshallah, coming in the next session. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen.